In Jeremiah chapter 1, look at verse 5. Well, verse 4. Then the word of the Lord came unto me. This is Jeremiah. Now watch this here. He said, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou came forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. I ordained thee a prophet unto the nation. Notice here, Jeremiah, God is now speaking to Jeremiah, and he's letting Jeremiah know before you was even formed in your mother's womb, God himself already knew you. And before he, you came out of the womb, Jeremiah, he said, I sanctified you. I had already set you apart before you even came out of your mother's womb. Then notice what he told Jeremiah. He said, and I ordained you a prophet to the nation before you even came out of your mother's womb. Now, there are three things here that took place by God. God said, I formed you, I sanctified you, and I ordained you. So, Jeremiah, I know exactly what you don't have. I know what you need. I know what you're going to need. I know what you're going to face. I know what you're going to encounter. I know everything that you're going to be up against. I know everything about you, Jeremiah, because before you was formed in your mother's womb, I knew everything you're going to be up against. I knew every person. I knew every, I knew every mistake you was going to make. You're going to make. I know every decision already that you're going to make. I know everything that you're going to encounter, Jeremiah, before you even know that what you're going to encounter, because before you was formed in your mother's womb. I knew you, number one. Second of all, I sanctified you. I'm the one that set you apart, Jeremiah. It ain't that you think you better than somebody else. It ain't that uh, you don't want to be around nobody else. I sanctified you. I pulled you to a side. I separated you from everybody else. So just because people talk about you, criticize you, say things about you, Jeremiah, that, 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 that you think that's hurtful. No, no, no. God said, I'm the one that set you apart. Then he told Jeremiah, and not only that, I ordain you to be a prophet to the nation. Watch this. Here we go. I ordain you. Jeremiah, you're going to do things others can't do, not based upon their schooling. You're going to be able to do things, oh, Jeremiah, because I ordained you to do it. I'm headed somewhere. I want to talk to you this morning about God's word, I mean, word seed for success. We're talking about becoming, becoming seed-minded, but this one I want to use as a subtitle, word seed for success. Come on, say it again. Word seed for success. Come on, shout, I have word seed for my success. Come on, say it again. I have in my possession... Right now, word seed for my success. I have it now. I don't lack nothing. I have it now. Word seed for my success. Notice here. Then he go on to say, then said our Lord God, behold, I cannot speak. For I am a child. Now he's looking at his own natural capability that will determine him being a prophet to the nation. He's looking at his, no, his natural capability or natural ability and he's comparing that to what God ordained him to be. He's looking at, okay, God, you telling me I'm going to be a prophet to the nation. I can't even hardly speak. But that don't have nothing to do with him being hard, hardly being able to speak, him being a prophet to the nation. He will be a prophet to the nation because God ordained him to be it. So whether he could speak or not, that had nothing to do with him being what God said he is. When you grab the revelation that you have, that you are who you are, because he said that you are, it has nothing to do with your own natural capability. Are you seeing this here? 
Watch this. It's going to be good. But the Lord said unto me, watch this. But the Lord said unto me, say not I am a child. Don't you say that, Jeremiah. I don't need for you to talk like that. Because your words is going to go against my plan. See, there are some things about your life that in order for it to change, your words going to have to change. See, you're trying to change this, you're trying to change that, but you hadn't changed the main thing that got to be changed, which is words that's coming out of your mouth. And I, I, I want this better. I'm trying to get that to be better. I'm trying to make this better. And, God, and Jeremiah said, I can't speak. God said, no, 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 no. I don't need for you to say that now. Because they have nothing to do with your own natural capability, Jeremiah. But you don't say that. Don't say what you can't do. Don't say you can't come out of debt. Don't say that you don't you can't live owing no man nothing but the lover. Can't don't don't say that that, that you're gonna always keep going through this. Some things I got to change what I'm saying. Watch this. We're talking about words here. Watch this here. But the Lord said to me, say not I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt, be, thou shalt speak. But then look what is uh, verse 8 here. We're we talking about word seed for success. Because it is the will of God that every one of us experience success the way that God wants us to experience success. Now, one thing I'm going to have to deal with is how do you define success? Because until you understand that and until you rightly divide, de define what success is, you can have the wrong interpretation of what it is. You can allow the world to, to define success for you and say that to, to be successful is you got to have the big house. You got to have the car. You got to have the money. You got to have this. You got to have that. But that's not necessarily success. To be successful, to be success in God. Actually, the Bible called Joseph success and Joseph was in prison. How is it that a man is in prison, serving in prison, but God said he was a successful man? Because success in the eyes of God is not based upon material possession. Success in the eyesight of God is a man or a woman who, who is able to enjoy their life on the level that God has promised that they can enjoy. A man and a woman, true success, God's way, is being able to be satisfied where you are, to be content where you are, not being a slave to the enemy, nor being a slave to this world. You find a man or a woman, a man or a woman can be in a one-bedroom apartment, but they in that one-bedroom apartment. They don't owe no man nothing but to love them. They got peace. They got joy. They got happy. They happy. Man, they, they walking in the peace of God, the love of God. Praise God. They're able to do whatever they want to do. Guess what? That man, that woman is successful to me. And the reason why I want to do this is because the world can make us think that you got to go out to things to qualify for success. And you can leave a place of contentment with godliness. In other words, you have a relationship with God. Your relationship with God is growing. It's thriving. God is increasing you. But you can start running out of things. And in the process of you running out of things, you lose your relationship with God. Now, now, he's no longer priority. But you got the big house. You got this and you got that. But, but he's nowhere around. That's not success. So, and I can give you whips the definition of all that, but I just want to just, just, just narrow it down just so you can see where we're going this morning because we're a seed for success. What you mean? God wants your, God wants your marriage to be successful. He wants the men and that woman to be able to get along with one another, love each other with an unconditional love, support one another, be there for one another, be a light to the world, be, be, be the example of what a marriage should be. 
He wants that business to be successful. That that business is based everything off of the word of God. And because that business is not compromising, that every people are seeing the fruit of that business. People being blessed by my, actually, I, I'm just going to call them Chick-fil-A. I, even though, you know, some chick, they have taken a hit last few whatever time. But Chick-fil-A is known for being a, a, a company that's based off of the word of God. Based off of the promises of God. Are you with me here? So there again, we're talking about success. Not from the world's perspective, but God has already given us the word for whatever area in your life to be successful and whatever to be a successful housewife, to be a good husband, to be to be the father of that child, to be the mother of that child, to be uh, 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 whatever in the case may be. God has already given us the tools to have success in every area of life, in your financial realm, in your body, in making your whole, in your family life. God has already given all of us the tools that is necessary to have success in every area of life. But now, in order to do that, now I'm going to have to deal with traditions of my mind. Because the traditions of my mind would tell me that I, I, I can't live like that. If I base it off of what I've always seen. But let's finish reading this here. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. But look what he said here to Jeremiah. Look at verse 8. Verse 8 said, be not afraid of their faces. For I am with thee to deliver thee. Then the Lord put forth his hand. And he did what? He touched what? Jeremiah's what? Notice what God touched. God touched Jeremiah's mouth. He didn't touch his hand. He didn't touch his head. He didn't touch his feet. He touched his mouth. In other words, God said, I got to do something supernaturally with your mouth. Because if I don't touch your mouth, you will keep saying the wrong thing. If I don't touch your mouth, then you will keep saying things you shouldn't say. Because I can touch your head. But if I don't touch your mouth, even though I anointed you to do something, you'll keep saying the wrong stuff. If, if I could touch your feet. I can bless your feet. And we're going to see here in uh, Joshua where he told Joshua, everywhere you go is going to be blessed. But if I but if I don't touch your mouth, even though wherever you step going to be blessed. But the moment you step into it, if I don't touch your mouth, you're going to mess that up. So let me touch your mouth because when I touch your mouth, everything that you touch will be blessed. Everything that you walk into will be blessed. If I, I, Jeremiah, I just got to touch your mouth because if I touch your mouth, I don't care what job you own, you'll prosper. If I touch your mouth, what neighborhood you're in, you'll prosper. If I touch your mouth, no matter what comes in your hand, it'll be blessed. But if I touch your mouth, no matter where you go, what happened, you, you'll be blessed because the blessing... Don't come from your hand. Don't come from your feet. Don't come from other people. It'll come from your mouth. Hallelujah. Now watch this here. He told him, don't be afraid of the faces. He's just, and the Lord said to him, I have put my words. I have put my words, Jeremiah. We're talking about words seed for success. I have put my words in your mouth. Jeremiah, I anointed you. I ordained you. I got you. But you're still going to have to use my word. I, before you was formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. I ordained you. I sanctified you. I ordained you to be a prophet to the nation. Oh, I got you, Jeremiah. But I'm still, you're still going to have to use my word. Some of you right now, God has ordained you to have an awesome life. The next thing I got to look at is what is coming out of my mouth, though? Because what's coming out of my mouth could be the contradiction to what I'm supposed to be experiencing. And it ain't that God is holding something up. And it ain't that I'm, in, in, I'm not in the will of God. 
And it ain't that, uh, 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 you know, the devil hold, the devil hinder me. No, no, no. It just could be the wrong things that's coming out of my mouth. That's not lining me up to the plan of God. Are you with me here? So God is saying, Jeremiah, you know, I have put my words in your mouth, Jeremiah, because it's my words. Watch this. This is going to do the work. It's my words that's going to bring you, Jeremiah, into that place of success that you need, that you desire. It's, it's my words, Jeremiah, in your mouth that's going to cause you to experience what it is to be a prophet to the nation. It's my words, Jeremiah, in your mouth that's going to cause you to defeat every giant. It's my words, Jeremiah, in your mouth that's going to cause the doors to open that can't no man close. Jeremiah, it's going to be my words in your mouth that's going to make the crooked places straight, the wrongs right. Jeremiah, it's my words in your mouth that's going to remove every stumbling block, everything that try to get in your way, everything that try to hinder you, everything that try to harm you, everything that try to stop you. Jeremiah, you ain't got to fight the battle. You ain't got to argue with nobody. You ain't got to tussle and fight with no. No, it's my word, Jeremiah, in your mouth that's going to remove the evil from you. It's my words in your mouth, Jeremiah, that's going to cause you to rise and, and rise above everyone else and be able to accomplish what your natural mind say you can't. It's my words, Jeremiah, in your mouth that's going to cause you a man who can't speak to end up speaking to a nation. Hey, shut up. It's my word, Jeremiah, in your mouth. Excuse me for hollering, y'all. Excuse me. I just about lost it there a minute because I know that it's his words in your mouth can bring you into places PhDs haven't stepped in yet. Shout I got word seed for every success. Jeremiah is my word in your mouth. I'm, I'm trying to contain myself, y'all. I am. Because I know after today. I said I know after today. Every last one of you that is in this building and even those who are watching by streaming, I'm excited not because of me, but I'm excited because every last one of you is, is putting on another set of wings this morning. And you are about to fly out of those coops that people had y'all in. The coop that the neighborhood said you're in. The coop the family said you will never do in. The coop People who I, who spoke against you. No, no, you got some new wings this morning. Is there any witness in here? Watch this here. Word seed. Word seed. Word seed. I'll put my words in your mouth. Now look at verse 10 right quick. He says, see. See. Can I just take my time? See, Jeremiah, you got to see this thing. Because what you can't see, you will never see. Jeremiah, you, you got to see it. You got to see what I'm telling you, Jeremiah. I know it looks crazy that you're going to be a prophet to the nation. But Jeremiah, I said it. And since I said it, you just need to see it. There are things that God said about you that you need to see. He said you're healed, you need to see it. He said you're whole, you need to see it. He said you're blessed coming in and blessed going out, you need to see it. He said you're the head and not the tail, even though you're going through, but you're not the tail. You ain't the one that's falling behind. No, no, he, you're the head. He said, but you need to see that. You need to see you blessed in the city. You need to see you blessed in the city. Well, well, I don't have. No, no, no. It ain't about what you don't have, Jeremiah. It's about what you can see. I can see it. I can see me owing no man nothing but the love. Oh, man, I'm working on that new building right now. 
Me and Lady Stevenson, boy, and Lady Stevenson got some dreams too, boy. Cause boy, Lady Stevenson can throw some some big stuff out there at you. She said, "Yeah, I, I'm ready for us to do this now. I'm ready for." And boy, I said, "Ooh, boy, okay, okay, praise God, okay, praise God, Hallelujah, praise God." But but hey, watch this. We can see it though. We can see it. Watch this, saints of God. Just because something is not in your reach now, don't mean it ain't going to be in your reach. See, you're waiting to believe something that's able to be reachable. But you ain't, you, you, you got to see it before it can be drawn to be touched. Oh, man. Are you with me here? You can't believe until you see something. God said, no, no, no. I need for you to change that. In order for you to, in order for you to touch something, you got to see it. First. And if I can see it, cat. Eventually, I'm going to put my hands on it. But the first thing I got to change is what's coming out of my mouth. Because what's in my mouth is affecting my sight. Come on, just lift your hand right quick. Say, Lord, I thank you. I got all, I got everything. I already have need of. It's just only a matter of time now. Oh, y'all, oh, 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 y'all, oh. It's just only a matter of time now. It's only a matter of time now. So that's why I ain't stressed. That's why I ain't beating myself up. That's why I ain't walking around condemned. That's why I ain't rushing trying to make something happen because it's only a amount of time. I don't have to manipulate. I don't have to cheat steal or do anything underhanded because it's a amount of time. Now, I don't have to try to crave or try to no, no, or beat somebody down or, or criticize somebody else what they have. No, it's only a amount of time. I can rejoice with you because it's only a amount of time. And when I see something happen for somebody else. Man, that's the time I need to cut up the most. Because if I see God do something in you, boy, guess what? I got to be up next. I got to be somewhere close. Are you seeing this here? We're talking about word seed. Word seed for success. I got to get the word on it first. And if I can get the word on it first, you're going to have to get Winston's Night's teaching to really understand what I'm talking about. Because I can't go back and talk about bringing all what we discovered Wednesday night. Because this is God's way of doing it. This is how he do things. Word seed. But watch this here. Oh, man, I got to go. Watch this. Watch this here. See, I have this day set thee over the nations, over the kingdom, to root out. Watch this. You see what the word doing? To root out, to what? Pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to build. Uh-oh. What was the last one? Because I, I got to, in order for me to harvest, I got to plant. I got to plant. In order for me to harvest, I got to plant. So this word that God, you put in Jeremiah's mouth, that word is going to root out. That word is going to pull down. That word is going to destroy that word is going to build, but that word is also going to plant. So just because I don't see what I'm saying right now, it's only a process. This word is working. The word is, actually, I'm here to announce to some of you right now, you in the waiting period. Oh, let, let, let me take a little deeper. Let me take a little deeper. Let me take it a little deeper. Because the scripture says Satan comes immediately for the word. Some of your battles is over. You've been in the waiting room. And if the enemy can get you to get out of the waiting room, he wants you to get out of the waiting room. He don't want you to keep waiting and keep speaking. But if he can get you so discouraged, if he can get you frustrated, if he can get you so agitated that you change your words, you come out of the waiting room because it ain't happening fast enough, it disrupts the process. He's trying to disrupt your process. Boy, I feel this. I don't know who this is for, but I am speaking to somebody's spirit. Satan is trying to disrupt 
your process. He's trying to get you to abort a vision. Abort a plan that is already in the making. Abort something before it manifests. This is a prophetic preaching here. And he's seen pressure from un 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 unlikely places. To now get you to question what you've been doing all this time. That, that, there we go. He's trying to abort the process. He's trying to disrupt the, the plan that is already in the making. See, you've already been ordained for some things. God has already set you aside for some things. There are some things with your name on it and it can't be stolen. But if it can get you to disrupt your own process. <sighs> Give me a minute, y'all. Give me a minute because something is happening. I feel there's a rumbling in this place. I can hear chains breaking off right now in my own ear. I can hear the sound of a trumpet that there are angels rejoicing because you got through it and the enemy was trying to get you to throw in the towel. He was trying to get you to make some other decisions. He was trying to get you to move in a certain realm and you was almost there. But the grace of God said, I will not let you go. I will not allow you to get in another place or position that it ain't me. You've been in a war. You've been in a fight. And this fight has been over your life. This fight has not been an easy fight. So I'm not going to stand up here and play with you about your fight. Because your fight was intense. But I'm here to rejoice with you. Ah, I said I'm here to rejoice. Because the devil is defeated. And he thought he had you. Where is she? Is there any rejoicing in here? Well, can I just get somebody to praise God with me just for a few minutes? I'm talking about just for a few minutes. Can I just get somebody just to praise God with me? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. 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 Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, uh-huh. Because he thought he had you. And he thought he had you exactly where he wanted you. But there was something on the inside of you that said, I got to go to church today. I don't know what it is, but for some reason, today is different. I feel different. My body is tired. My mind is tired. But I need to be in the midst today. For some reason, I don't know what it is. But as soon as I walked out, Came down, my sister Sheila looked at me this morning. She said, Pastor, I, I, I sent something this morning. She said, I know God got a word that's going to break up everything. Going to break up everything. I believe it. And I said, I agree. I don't know what he's going to do, but I know he's going to do something. He's going to tear down the walls this morning. He's going to tear down some strongholds. He's going to bring some people back. He's going to restore some families. He's going to restore even some relationships that the enemy thought he was interrupting and disrupting. He's going to bring me in some broken pieces. There's anointing this morning. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Lord, let me calm down. Hmm. 
Man, how fast somebody right quick tell them, I got it, I got it too. I got my seed. I got my seed. I got my seed. Thank you, Pastor Stevenson. Thank you. If you don't say another word, Pastor Stevenson, I got my seed. I know what to do now. I see where he came now. I see the door that he came through now. I see the window he tried to creep in now. But thank you, Pastor Stevenson. I got my seed for success. And I'm going to use this thing. It's in my mouth. It's in my mouth. Death and life. Come on, just lift your hands right there. Come on, come on. Just lift your hands right there. I've learned in 30 years, when there's a flow like this, for me to get out of the way, just lift up a praise, begin to do some worship, and move out the way. Because all he needed me to do was plant the seed. And I got it from here, son. I got it from here. I got it from here. All I needed you to do is plant the seed. Sow the seed. And because you sow the seed, I'll do the watering. I'll do the removing. I'll do the pulling up. They sung the song. This is my season. But they sung it without the revelation of the prophetic. Because this is your season. And it's the season of restoration. And this thing is going to be supernatural. So I cannot speak. Jeremiah, don't say you can't speak. I just picked that. This is going to win tonight. God wants you to know. Stop treating you the way they treat you. Let me say it again. You stop treating you the way they treat you. What you mean they? Well, they may not speak well of you. You may not be esteemed in their eyes. But don't you treat you the way that they treat you. God said, I have given you everything that pertain to life and godliness. You put the seed in you before you was formed in your mother's womb. I knew you. I knew you. I sanctified you. That's why you've always been different. That's why you didn't meet people's standards. And that was the very intention of God. He said, because I don't want you to meet people's standards. Why? You're going to set the standard. So if you don't conform to one, you can't set what you don't conform to. That's why I even moved some people from your life. And they tried to make it seem as if it was you. Or something wrong with you. God said, no. They were trying to put something in you. I was trying to keep you from. So if that means I got to separate them from you because you're my prized possession. You're special. 
And God said, I, ain't, I just can't let anything around you or anybody around you or anything go on around you. And, 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 and because you didn't know that, you thought, man, what's going on with me? Why does it seem like I'm so different? And the enemy want to try to use that to make it seem like that, that it's a handicap. God said, no. Before you was formed in your mother's womb. I sanctified you. I ordained you. Minister McLean, I, I can pretty much bet you she was prophesying at the age of 10, 11 years old and didn't even know it. I ain't even said nothing to her about it. I didn't ask her, but I guarantee you if she was to ask her, she, she, would, she would speak and didn't even know why. I can, I can say so many other names in here. Why? Before you was formed in your mother's womb. You, James Lager, leader of his family. And you the youngest, ain't you? Leader. Oh, the brother there. James, what you think about this? I'm the youngest. But before you was formed in your mother's womb. Before his mother passed, I want James to come down here and handle this. You got all the data, mama. Before you was born in your mother's womb, I sanctified you, ordained you to be a prophet to the nation. You want to know why you're so different? You've been set apart. For the master's use. Can you just give God a good praise in here? Come on, come on, come on. 